All right, here's another really easy one, similar to the other two we just did. Um, it's called capitalization. So we're going to, uh, well, you know what? Let's just start by copying all this in the new project, and I'll show you. So we'll copy that. Oh, let's see if I can do this. Okay. Let's open the caret editor and add a new file. Paste that in. Save this one as capitalize.html. And let's test that one. So command O and capitalize. 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 Okay, so this is going to allow the user to type something in here. And then when they click capitalize, um, it's just going to show what those characters would be capitalized. Um, it will also have two other features, as you can see here. We want to have another button that will make everything turn to lowercase, and another button that turns it into what I'm going to call mocking case, where it just goes every other character, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, as you can see there. Um, that's our meme case. Sometimes people see this type of text in memes, right? But it's I think usually the general idea is that you're mocking whatever you're saying there. All right, so we copied that in. Step two says to um, add in the row and column attributes. So let's copy that. It says put it inside the text area elements opening tag. And let's put that somewhere here. And there it is. Paste, save, refresh. And that's the default size now. That's what we want. Perfect. Step three. Add ID attributes to the text areas opening tag, as well as to the output divs opening tag. Nothing new here. We've done this several times. Copy that. Put it inside the text area. Save it. Copy this one. Put that inside the opening div tag. This allows us to access these elements for the purpose of knowing what they typed, as well as displaying what we turn it into the uppercase or lowercase or uh, mocking case, whatever it is. All right, and then step four says to add the onClick event to the button. So the capitalize one, of course, the onClick is going to call a function called capitalize text. Um, later, we'll create another button that does lowercase and another one that does mocking case. But for now, we're just going to deal with the capitalize function. Step five says, add some script that works for the capitalize function. So I'm just going to copy the script in. Let's put it right above the body, which is part of the HTML. Paste that in, indent this like it's supposed to be. All right, so the capitalize text function, everything that that does is going to go inside of these two curly brackets, starting with in step six, the command to access the value they typed, the text they typed into the text area. So we save that as a variable called text. And of course, it was the ID that allows us to get that value. We accessed that particular element using its ID, and then we were able to ask what was inside of it, so what the user actually typed into the text area. All right, step seven. Now create a variable that will eventually contain all the modified text. Just like in the last assignment, we created a new variable, and we're going to piece by piece put it together. Step eight, after that command, we're going to set up the repeating process, of course, using a loop. So we can copy this in. And this is going to allow us to look at each character one by one, just like we did in the reverse text one, as well as the word count one tab that over, and you can even tab that, indent that a little bit. All right, so current character, that's, of course, that represents each individual character, step by step we're going through. So what we need to do each time we see one is turn it into a capital version of itself, and that's what step nine is here. So we're going to take that variable um, right here. And we're going to say, hey, get your uppercase version. So if you're a lowercase a, all of a sudden it turned into an uppercase a. If it was already uppercase, then it'll just stay uppercase. But anyway, whatever it turns out to be, the uppercase version is now 
being joined to the variable output text that we created. Now the next step says after the loop is complete, we want the app to display the result. So let's copy this code in here and then put it right after that loop. So again, nothing really new here. This is a lot like the reverse text one. The only thing different, I guess, is we're going upward instead of downward with the loop. And instead of just appending the character, we're appending the uppercase version of the character. All right. Um, oh yeah, we can test this out. Let's save that, run it, see if it capitalizes this stuff. Look below for a capital version of this. And then I press capitalize, and it says right there, look below for a capital version of this. Perfect. All right, so step 11 says we could have just used the uppercase function that we were able to use on each individual character. It turns out you can also use that on text itself. So instead of the loop, we could have just copied this part in. I'll show you what that looks like. Or I'll show you that that works just fine as well. If I just pasted that there instead, we wouldn't even need the loop. Capitalize me. And it works, see? Okay, um, but again, we do want to use the loop, especially when we start on the third one, the one for the mocking case we're going to have to have a loop because there is no special mocking case function we can call on text. We have to do everything character by character for that one. So we'll just keep the for loop for both of, or for all three of them. Okay. Step 12 says make a button for turning things into lowercase. All right. Well, step or uh, line 27 here is where the other button was created already. Why don't we just copy that? and change it. So instead of saying capitalize, this one says lowercase. And then we'd also want to change the function name to say lowercase text. Let's just test that real quick. Perfect. So the button's there, but if I try to use it, if I say here's some capital stuff and then turn it lowercase, this script doesn't exist yet. Remember, all we have so far is the capitalized text function. There's no function here that says lowercase text. So that's what step 13 actually. Um, oh, I guess I left it implied. I didn't spell it out for you here, but we need to create a function called lowercase text. Maybe I should add that into the text instructions. Um, but I can just say lowercase text. I just copied everything that was in this function and pasted it again here and changed its name to be lowercase text. The only difference is instead of going to uppercase, of course, we want this one to go to lowercase. See, it was really easy. That's why I didn't spell it out for you. I figured you could probably figure it out on your own. So if I say, here's some lowercase stuff, capitalize it, it works. Here's some uppercase stuff, capitalize it. It works. I'm sorry, not capitalized. Lowercase. It, it works. Perfect. Um, the last one, of course, 13 says make a button to turn it into mocking case. So that'll be easy. And button. Just copy and paste. Change this to say. Um, and you know what? <laughs> Let's actually do mocking case. So they know what it is. Um, and we need another function called mocking case. Let's just say yeah, mocking case text. And then we'll copy and paste one of these. Change that to say mocking case. All right. But right now, it's not going to work. If I say call that. It just lowercased it because when I copy it and paste it over, it's just set to lowercase everything when I run this function. Um, but I need this to make every other one be uppercase and every other one be lowercase. So uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, right? So the easy way to do that is to check if the current position we're looking at, whether that's the first position, second position, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, however many characters there are, we're looking at each one using its position I. So if I happens to be an even number, like 0, or 2, or 4, or 6, or 8, we could just use that 
in the even number case make it uppercase and then in the odd number case make it lowercase. So an easy way to check if something is even is to just say using the mod operator here which looks like the percent sign we can just check if when I mod it by the number 2 the value turns into 0 that means it's an even number and what's actually happening is remember this means if you were to divide a number by another number this will return its remainder so I in this case might be a 7 if you're at the seventh position if we said 7 divided by 2 what's the remainder now the remainder in that case would be a 1 right so that would tell us it's not even. 7 is not an even number. But in the case where i is 6, 6 divides by 2 evenly, right? There's no remainder when you divide 6 by 2, so it equals 0 in that case. All right, so what that tells us is if this condition is true, we know it's an even number. And then we can make an else case. When that condition is not true, we know it's an odd number. So if you'll just copy this stuff in here, and we can put it just right here. Let's indent this. And instead of always appending the lowercase version, of course, that's not what we want to do. We only want to do that if it's an odd number. It doesn't really matter which one is which. You could choose to do that for the even numbers and choose to do the other one for the odd numbers. Um, and then we want to have the opposite for this, right? If it's an even number, make it an uppercase character. All right, so we're finished. If we run that, it should work. So turn this into mocking case. That's the mocking case, there it is. Perfect. Lowercase, there it is. Capitalize, there it is. Cool. So you can turn that in. Submit that HTML file.